In this video, we're going to go over how to count the number of occurrences of a value in an array. And it could be different kinds of arrays, but we're going to go with int arrays. So we're going to say int my array is equal to, and we'll make our array with some values in it. So we'll say like four or four, nine, seven, six, five, eight, three, two, one. And we've got what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine values in here. We'll add one more. We'll add like another five there. So we got 10 values in there now. And what we're going to do is we're just going to have a count variable that's going to keep track of the count. So we're going to say int count is equal to zero. And what we're going to do is we're going to count a particular value that we want to find in this array. And every time we encounter it, we're going to increase the count by one. And what we'll do is we'll loop through the array elements. So we're going to start off with the first element and check all the way up to the last element. And we're going to just make sure that we check for the value that we want to find. And we can make a variable with that. We can say like int and we'll say to find is equal to maybe we'll say five. And we'll make our loop now. So we'll say int i is equal to zero. i is less than I've got 10 things in my array. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we'll say less than 10 i plus plus. And then I'm going to say if my array at i is equal to the thing I'm trying to find, then increment the count. And then I should be able to print out the number of five. So I'll say like number of fives found, and I'll say percent %d, and then I'll output the count. And we'll just say, maybe I'll just say number of fives found. Okay, so let's try to run this and see what happens. And I get number of fives found is two. If I were to change the to find number to say six, there's only one six in there. And it should then be that the number of sixes found is one. So I'll run this again. Number of sixes found is one. If I were to add, maybe let's change the six to, we'll just we'll add a couple more sixes in there. We'll add like a six here, a six here, a six here. And now we've got four sixes in there. So we'll give it a shot now. We got, we got four sixes. So our algorithm appears to be working. And all we're doing is we're just checking from index zero all the way up until index nine, because arrays start with index zero. And we just check every value in the array to see if it's equal to the value that we're trying to find. And if it is equal to it, we increment count, having started off count at zero. So it's a pretty simple algorithm, but it is an algorithm. And if you're ever stuck on how to interpret how your code is working, you can always just throw in printfs to figure things out. So like if you were to, if you were to you know, throw in printfs here, you could check to see what array element you're checking. So we could say my array percent %d is equal to percent %d. And what we could do is we could output i, and we could output my array at i. So that way we know, you know, what array element are we checking now and what is its value. We could also throw like a printf in here to say that, you know, we found a value. So we could say like printf, we could say, you know, found percent %d um, incremented count two, and we'll say percent %d. And then I'm going to say here um, to find, and we'll say, we'll put the count. So here I'm saying like printf found percent %d, and I'm going to output to find, and we're going to say incremented count to percent %d, and we're going to, we're going to output the new value of count. Maybe I'll just put a little tab here too, just so we can kind of make a special note of it here. So if I run this here now, right, what you can see is you can see, and maybe actually I'll, I'll take that back just so that way it gets on one line again. It kind of, it kind of squished things a bit in terms of the output. So we'll just do it again here. Okay. So you can see here, um, you know, we check my array zero for four. We check my array one, it's nine, seven, six. Okay. But now when we find a six, that's what we were looking for. So it, we've output here, found six, incremented count to one. And then here, you know, we find another six, found six, increment account to two, increment account to three, increment account to four. And you can see what's happening in our code with these printfs because they're letting us know, you know, that this if statement is running because we are encountering a six. And you can tell that it is a six at that, in the array at that position because we're also outputting that information. We're outputting the array index and the value at that index for this iteration of the loop here. So we're able to see that like, oh, we found a six and it makes sense because there is a six here. Um, and so whenever you're, you're having trouble understanding how your code's working, throwing in printfs is always a good idea to just, to just 
understand you know how your code's actually functioning. Now, one thing we might want to do with this here is put it into a function. So that way we can call it again and again whenever we need it, as opposed to, you know, writing out the logic once and then we'd have to repeat this in our main function wherever we need it. If we put it into a function, we can call it whenever we need it. So what I'll do is I'll make a function called occurrences. So we'll say int occurrences and it's got to accept a few things. It's got to accept the array as a parameter. It has to accept the length. And it's also going to need the value that it should be finding, the number of occurrences of. So it's going to need those parameters. And we'll actually just kind of copy and paste a lot of logic here because we've already kind of worked it out. We might as well just, you know, use it again here. So I'm just going to copy and paste this in because for the most part, it'll work. The only difference is I, I called it array here. So I'm going to change it to array there. And the length is now not set to 10. The length is going to be a parameter that we pass to the, uh, it's, it's going to be a parameter that the function has. So we're going to pass it as an argument. So we'll say here, uh, i is less than length. So that way it'll work for any length. And I'll just throw this up on one line again. And you know what? I could even just put this on one line too, because really the for body only has one statement. So I might as well just put that on one line too without the squiggly brackets, just to make the function concise. And to find is no longer being accepted as a parameter. It's, or sorry, to, to find is no longer hard coded, I should say, to six. It's now being accepted as a parameter, right? So to find, I should, I should actually get rid of that there too. And, and now it's, it's basically a simple function where we just start off with count being zero. We loop over the loop length. Uh, we, we loop over the array length. And then we check to see if the array at the position is equal to what we're trying to find. So I've got one array there. I'll, I'll make another array here just so we can test both of them. So I'll say like int my array two, and I'll make this other array have some different values in it. So maybe we'll have like zero, zero, one, one, zero, two, two, three. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll check the occurrences of a couple of things. We'll say like int find one, and we'll try to find like fives in the first array. And I'll add it, I'll add in another five just to make it more interesting, or add in two more fives just to make it more interesting. So we'll try to find fives in the first array. So we'll say find um, find r15 is equal to, and we'll say occurrences, and we have to pass it my array one, and we're gonna have to pass it the length of the array, which should still be, we had what? It was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So the length of the array is 10, and we're trying to find five. And then I'll do the same thing for the next array. We'll try to find the number of zeros in this array. So in array two, we're going to try to find the number of zeros. And I just kind of, this is just my like little convention here just to keep track of like what I'm, what the value is that I'm finding. Uh, and I'll just say here, what, how many, what's the length here? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight things in the array and we're going to try to find zero. Okay. So then here, uh, I can print out, we'll say print F, we'll say number of fives found in array one, in my array one, is going to be find R one five. And then we'll, we'll print out the number of zeros found in array two. So print out number of zeros found in my array two. And that one we called find array two zero. Okay, so we'll clear this, give this a try. Uh, warning, oh, I didn't return. I just saw that error there, it says warning non void function does not return a value, right? I forgot something important here. This function has to return the count. That's pretty important that the function that's supposed to count the occurrences returns the actual count. And I forgot that. So I've added that in there, there, there now. Okay, so that should fix that. Let's give this a shot. And we get that the number of fives found in my array one is three. And the number of zeros found in my array two is zero. That's because I passed in my array one instead of two. So it says I was kind of surprised by this value because it says the number of zeros found in my array two is zero. But if you look here, I actually didn't pass in my array two to the, to the second function call. I passed in my array one. If I do pass in two, it should find zero. We'll give this a try. And now, yeah, it's out. So it's, it found the three fives in the first one and the three zeros in the second one. We could mess around with the values. Like I could put in a couple more fives in the first one and I'll put in a couple more, I'll put in like one more zero in the second one. And 
you know, I can run this and we can expect to get the same correct result back. So we got five fives now, four zeros back, which makes sense. And so now what we've done is we, we put in this, this function that we could then use again and again, uh, wherever we need it. And so if we we're going to try to solve this problem, this would be a good way to do it is to put in a function so we can call it wherever we need it. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.